I'm Paul Gleeson, Oricon's Managing Director for Energy Resources and Manufacturing, and I'm talking to Professor Peter Ashworth from University of Queensland about the challenges we face in transitioning to a low carbon future. So the challenge that brought UQ and Oricon together was a, really about a group of, a small group of people that were really positive and motivated to do something different. And within the context of a university that's all about education, it's not actually that easy. There was a lot of different processes and things that were met along the way. And I think that's where having a partnership was actually really useful and fruitful to moving it forward. In the Australian energy market context, uh, it could look very much like this project uh, that, uh, that we're highlighting, the um, UQ Warwick Solar Farm, where big consumers take action into their own hands because they can now. Um, I think ultimately the whole system will start to um, follow that, you know. But uh, the fact that as a big consumer you can now choose to what level you want to participate in the energy market, that's really the big change. Um, that combined with the fact that it's now economic to do these things, so it's no longer just reliant on someone's sustainability drivers. It'll often make sense for someone to do it commercially. Um, but the idea that you could choose whether you actually want to own and operate a, an asset and be a market participant or whether you just want to contract with someone else who's developing one um, or do it through um, a retailer in a more conventional way, but you've got ways now of choosing where your electricity comes from um, and just how much impact it has on the environment. So I think that's, that's really driving the change. So the future vision, I think, for UQ and Oricon going forward is this commitment to low carbon, finding a future you know, that is sustainable. And while the Warwick Solar Farm is one thing that we can do locally, in my role as Chair of Sustainable Energy Futures, um, I look after the Masters, which has a real mix of domestic and international students. And so that changes the conversation quite a lot for me because it's not just about what's happening here, but also internationally. And I guess that's what motivates me to do the job that I do because there's, we all know, there's a billion people that don't have access to electricity and that's the most basic form of electricity, two LED lights and some um, mobile phone charging. So I think you've got, you've got a couple of things going on in the world. So you've got developing economies which are trying to get electricity for the first time and then you've got developed economies like ours which are looking to how do they transition over the coming decades to a, a lower carbon future. And I think for the developing economies, in some instances, it may be possible for them to leapfrog from no electricity to the ultimate solution. But for economies like ours, it's, it's possibly trickier to go from a, a, a well-established entrenched system to what the one of the future looks like. So Australia really can play a role in, in modelling that just transition and looking after everyone on the way through. I think while most of us would acknowledge we are in a transition and that's the things that we've been talking about in our partnership with Oricon and UQ, I think where I see in the world is this disagreement on the time it will take to transition and that's where all the tension comes. So it also creates an opportunity. So for Australia where we are very heavily reliant on fossil fuels both for our energy but also for exporting and the royalties that that returns, that's a big ask to think about what's going to replace that and I think in many ways that's sort of part of the crux of the the problem as we transition is how do we move away our reliance and come up with alternatives that we can actually bring royalties, bring new jobs and new skills. That said, I think there's some real exciting opportunities that are emerging in different technologies and I guess that's what we're exploring with our partnership. So there's been a bit of discussion about um, how big or small of an emitter we are and whether we should bother doing anything um, about our own emissions. Uh, to me there's a couple of reasons why we need to do uh, as much as we can. One is because we have the, the capability and the capacity to do so and the other is that it's largely economic for us now to make that transition and I'm talking about uh, low carbon energy sources. Um, I think the other role that Australia should play is it can model what that transition looks like um, largely from fossil to renewables over the coming decades and when we talk about transition, there's a phrase that, that gets used a bit, a just transition, and it's really important to understand the impact of these changes, um, not just to, I guess, the, the physical assets, but more importantly to the communities, the regions, will jobs be in the same places or of the same type? 
So modeling a just transition and how you go from one source of energy to another over time without creating massive disruption, both in terms of system stability, but also in terms of the communities and the regions. And I think Australia has already been playing a role um, in doing, I guess, some of the, the modeling of that over time. If you look at programs like the um, Solar Flagships program, which ran 10 years ago, uh, the role that that played in helping drive the cost of solar down globally is, uh, is quite well documented. You know, and that's something that, at the time, technology wasn't quite there, or it certainly wasn't price competitive. If we hadn't embarked on something like that, we wouldn't have solar as affordable as it is today. So that's something that has impacted on a world stage. Music